You know, sometimes life really, really sucks. And I'm gonna tell you a story today about how someone who I considered to be a fairly good friend just kind of knifed me in the back, and you never see it coming, you know? They say that the deepest circle of hell is reserved for betrayers and mutineers, to use the quote from Pirates. But it is. in, in, this, in uh, I believe it was Dante's Inferno. You have the circles of hell, and the, the, the final circle is those who betray and um, are disloyal. So there's somebody I've known since Occupy Wall Street. In fact, he was one of the people who was organizing Occupy Wall Street before it even started. He was probably the only person at Occupy Wall Street who was my friend, I guess. And it's, I wouldn't say we were like best friends or anything. We hung out a couple times uh, during the, the whole thing. But there were a lot of people who were unreasonable, who were mean. Well, just, just to get into it without burying the lead, Unicorn Riot is something he co-founded with a bunch of other people. And they decided to dump my Discord logs. I know the Discord is public, so that's not, it's not really about that. I don't really care. Uh, but now, like, the only thing that, that comes of this is they're smearing me as a right-winger, and people are pulling shit out of context, and they're using it, essentially, to attack me. So, while I, I, I never, I always knew the Discord was public, and, uh, you know, people were going to pull things out of it. I don't care. It's just I never thought that the person who would try to cause me harm would be someone I had stuck my neck out for, someone I had uh, worked with. So I have this tweet, and I had a, I had a couple of tweets. Uh, basically, someone's pulling, I, I quoted Vox.com. I have this Vox article. Uh, nope, not that one. This one. I have this Vox article. That's going to be for another video. I have this... Uh, uh, article from Vox that I was criticizing back when it came out, which is, wow, that was a long time ago. And in this article from Vox, they're arguing against Sam Harris, who makes a point about race and intelligence. In this, there is a direct quote where one of the doctors, Eric Turkheimer, actually postulates that Jewish people inherit certain traits. I completely disagree. His argument against this notion, right here, starting with consider the assertion, and he actually links to a white nationalist. So this was my uh, uh, criticism. And I tweeted about it. I made it, I made a couple videos about it where I said, why is Vox linking to white nationalists? And why is Vox even entertaining the JQ? It's, it's, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. Okay. Vox actually published this. I criticized it. Now people, including people like Paul F. Tompkins, a celebrity, are weaponizing a quote from Dr. Eric Turkheimer, attributing it to me, because I was criticizing it. And this stuff happens all the time. The issue, again, isn't that people are going to try and lie, cheat, and smear. It's that Unicorn Riot, Lorenzo, the group he's a part of, someone who I consider to be my friend, waited for me to turn my back and then jammed a knife as far as they could into it. I want to make a few things uh, clear. Unicorn Riot, they publish discords. They typically go after, you know, fringe right-wing groups and identitarians and stuff like that. So it's confusing to me why they would come to my Discord, keeping in mind that for most of you that know, I shut down the Discord because we couldn't moderate the hate. The goal of the Discord was to create a newsroom. Discord is trash. And when we started removing people for breaking the rules, then people started complaining about what they were allowed to say. And I said, I don't want to be a moderator. And I even have, uh, I, you can even search. This is, what, this is why I don't care about the database itself. Because you can actually pull up me telling people off, like this one, like F off with that, you know, here. And this one, racists are all bad. It's not hard to find that anything I say publicly is the same thing I say in these videos. It's that unicorn riot. This, this is what this video is about. It's not about the publication of this, although it is kind of dirty to, you know, they're, they're smearing me and trying to use out of context quotes to hurt me. It's that this was a good friend of mine. Far right activity. Ah, right. They say it's thousands of white supremacists and neo-Nazi discords after Charlottesville, right? The same discords that actually, that they've published, that I've quoted, because they attack me for being mixed race. This is what, this, this, this is to me, like the epitome of, of evil, spite, malice. And the worst thing, the thing that really drives a stake in my heart, is that this is a person who I thought was my friend. So, when I was working for Vice, we needed to hire people. 
And there were a couple people I knew from Occupy Wall Street who were associated with activists that were good to me and that I wanted to help out. And so I hired Lorenzo on a contract. We overpaid him. I made sure that everybody who works with me gets paid way more than the market rate at, at the expense of, at the cost of my budget. We flew him out to New York. He worked with us for a couple of weeks and helped us produce some live streams. I had an iPhone that I used for filming Occupy Wall Street. It's very important to me. If you look behind me, you can see that I keep things from the events that I cover because they're very important. In fact, I have, I have a box of all of the phones I used for these moments. That iPhone was one of them. That, was, that iPhone was like the key phone that I used for the bulk of that Occupy period before I finally went off and joined Vice. One day, Lorenzo told me he needed a phone so he could keep working, and so I gave it to him. I got him hired at Fusion for, uh, I believe it was around $100,000 a year, because I had a budget, because these companies were taking care of me, and I wanted to make sure if I'm going to bring somebody out and give them a chance, you know, and I want them to work with me, I'm not, I'm not paying you the bare minimum. I'm not going to pay you minimum wage. This is a guy who was an activist at Occupy Wall Street, who helped set up the live streaming for the activists and, and, and another group. Uh, I think he lightly worked with Global Revolution. And so I said, come out and I will pay you, you know, it's a Disney company. They have the money. Should I have paid? Like if, if, if I actually, you know, was running a business, would a business really pay someone that job to, to do live engineering that rate? Absolutely not. Um, another company that hired a friend of mine paid something like 40K. But I had a budget. And they said, here's how much money you have to hire the people you need. And so I said, okay, you make six figures, buddy. You stick with me. I got your back. He had, he, so, he, so I gave him some equipment. I'm not going to get into the specifics um, too much because I don't want to dredge up old you know, nonsense. Um, but I gave him equipment. We covered his flights out to, uh, to New York. He worked with me uh, at Fusion for, I don't, know, I don't know exactly how long he was there. It might have only been like six months. It might have been like, I think it was like eight, eight or 10 months. Cause he, I think, I can't remember when he joined exactly, but there were some other people that I worked with too, who have absolutely done the same thing and, and knifed me in the back. But here's the thing, the people that I hired, there's some, there's another guy I worked with at Vice Infusion who, you know, did me dirty. But the, but the thing is, you know, that guy, it's someone I met through Vice and I was like, whatever, man, I'm not surprised these people will put a knife in your back at a moment's notice. But this is somebody I, I, I was shocked to find that they're tweeting out that I'm like a right winger who provides, you know, favorable coverage to extremists and stuff like that. And it's and it's 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 nonsense. But of course, they live in a weird, you know, Wally world. I can't believe. Right. It's, it's, it's hard to believe when you're standing, you're, you're you're standing somewhere. There's someone that you think, you know, I'm going to help them out. They helped me out. They were nice to me. I've got your back. And then as soon as you turn around, they sink a knife in. It's, it's like, I never experienced something like that, you know? Uh, there are very few people in my life that I would have considered to be decently good friends. There's, there's a few other important things, too. Like, I don't want to act like we hung out every day, we were best friends, but it was someone I actually thought had my back. You know, when I said, like, hey, man, can you come out and work with us? I guess, you know, w what you realize sometimes is maybe this dude, Unicorn Riot dude, didn't really give a shit about me at all, and it was just free money. Maybe he hated me the whole time. Maybe he was a fringe, you know, regressive far leftist, and maybe he thought it was a way to get free resources from the machine and just, you know, used me. That's, that's, that, that's, that's, you know, probably, probably what happened. Unicorn Riot has done some things that are extremely questionable. Uh, and I've never said anything because I'm like, I've reached out to Lorenzo privately like, dude, what are you doing, man? Like, whoa, what is this? When they've published like overt lies. And, uh, Lorenzo just unfriends me. And so I guess it's, I guess this is how you realize that there really are evil people in this world, you know, like really evil people who think they're smarter, they're better. They don't care about you. They don't, they don't have empathy. They, there's a lot of people associated with these groups that act like they have empathy. They claim to be fighting for a group of people, but in reality, they're fighting for themselves. Like, let, like let me ask this of Lorenzo, Unicorn Riot. Why would he fly out to New York and take a six figure job working with me? and take my equipment and pretend to be my friend if he was just going to turn around and do something like this. I would never do this to anybody, you know? I can only, I can only assume he just doesn't care, and he never did. And that's like, a, that's, that's like a powerful punch in the face 
when you find out, you know, that that's, that's, that's what it is. So now we get, you know, these wing nuts, Dan, Dan O'Sullivan, whoever this guy is, taking a picture of me quoting the Vox article, which I showed you earlier. Consider the assertion, right? And then we have that, uh, where is it at? It's right here. Consider the assertion. It's quite literally me taking this and, and, uh, and, and, pu- and posting it. And the, the main issue here is, again, my Discord, all public. If you actually look at the context, it's me saying, why is Vox doing this? And it's, and, it, and it's published around the same time as my tweets. My question is, why would someone that I tried to genuinely help out, that I gave something that meant a lot to me, why, why would somebody that I considered my friend try and damage my life and hurt me? And that's so crazy. Just, just getting blindsided by it. You know, if he sent me a message and said, I hate you, I'd be like, well, okay, that sucks. Like, wow, I, that, that hurts, you know? It's like, that's not cool. But to just have them basically, like, download all my logs in an effort to hurt me is just the craziest feeling ever. It's, it's you know. I'll end by, 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 uh, by quoting myself in their Discord leaks. Racists are all bad. And I'll end by mentioning, for those that have asked and weren't, uh, or who haven't seen why the Discord got shut down, and I've pointed this out over and over again, it's because of the overt anti-Semitism. And I put that on Discord. We had rules. We banned people for, for, because what they would do is, listen, I'll make one thing clear. I believe in free speech, but this discord was semi-public, meaning you're allowed to come in. You're allowed to come in specifically to talk about news in a newsroom. It's a very, very isolated circumstance. It's not a public square for people to have debates. It was a place for me to say, what's the story of the day? Quite literally, it was called the subverse hashtag newsroom. So when people would come in and start posting memes and racist stuff, I would say, I get it. You have free speech. Go into it. We, we made another room for, for hate speech and for people who want to say nonsense. I, I told people to stop posting these things. All right. When they broke the rules, but more importantly, while stresses, what people would do is they would try and change the conversation. No matter what we would be talking about, we t- Donald Trump, Congress, the progressives, whatever, they would try and weasel in anti-Semitism fine. You want to talk about that stuff? If it makes sense, we can have a conversation about it. But what you're doing is you're invading my space where I'm trying to have a conversation about current news and you're shutting down the, 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 the discourse. So eventually I gave people a warning. When the warning didn't fly, ban. The bans resulted in, you know, free speech versus, you know, this is a newsroom. And I said, I don't care. <laughs> this is like, I look, I have, I, It's a discord for me to try and work with people who watch my videos on sourcing news. If this isn't going to work, I have no reason to keep it up. If Twitter wanted to just nuke itself and wipe itself out, all right, well, there you go. So I said, I'm done with the discord. And because of these problems, I'm going to get rid of it. Notably, with with this, (laughs) racists are all bad. And then uh, I just basically X'd it out and was gone. I said, screw it. I don't have anything to do with this. This was months ago. And then I started getting emails from people complaining about moderation. And so I said, no, I have nothing to do with this. And then finally just axed the server. And I axed the server, I think like two months ago, mostly because I kept getting emails from people. So here's what ends up happening. Essentially, I shut down Discord because Discord has serious problems with with content moderation. And they have serious problems with, I I don't know, it's, it's serious cultural problems. I can't even open a chat room to have a conversation about news without being flooded by people who try to destroy it. We had to put a bunch of rules in place and it wasn't enough. And that's just the internet. But I want to stress, this wasn't a place where I said anyone can come, all are welcome. And if people want to make the point that Twitter has rules, right? Because I'm going to have a con- I'm, I'm going to be having a conversation with uh, David Packman about this, probably actually right now, on, on live on my channel, my main channel. People like to make the argument that Twitter is a room they have rules. You agree to the rules before coming in. I, I understand. But there's a difference between a private small room of a couple hundred people and the open and massive monopoly that dominates the whole space. The difference here is if I had a room that could hold 20 people and I said, you can only come in if you do X, that's actually acceptable under certain circumstances, right? Behaviors are restricted, but we don't restrict people based on identity or you know other things. In fact, I tried to be fairly open with opinions so long as they didn't disrupt the flow of the newsroom. And I'll make another point too. 
A better example would be imagine an office space where people were working. And I said, this space is specifically for people who want to come in and agree to work on certain projects and have a conversation, not just to come in and voice your opinion, you know, like free speech, when you're the free speech party, like Twitter says. Twitter, on the other hand, would be more like someone building a fence around town square and saying it's mine now, or slowly expanding until there is no private room. It's literally the giant stadium where Trump is giving a speech and they say, we don't care. We're not letting you in for this reason. Scale plays a role in this. Long story short, I don't want to get into this conversation. The point is, fine, I don't care, Unicorn Riot. If you want to publish my, dis- my, my, my Discord, people stream me all the time. I don't care. I don't care about, you know, I just ignore this stuff. What really, really made me want to do this video is that I called Lorenzo after I started seeing this, and he sent me to voicemail. And I went on Facebook, and he unfriended me. And I just want to stress, I don't, I, you know, some of you probably understand that feeling. When you think someone's your friend and you, and you you try to take care of them and help them out and then you turn around, I got a couple more videos coming up for you in a few minutes. I'll see you shortly.